Hello everyone and welcome to a uh, little bit of a slightly s irregular scheduled uh, live stream. Obviously only just live streamed yesterday but um, won't be able to do a lockout countdown Q&A tomorrow so I thought I'd just bring it forward a day. Just do 30-45 minutes, just go through as many of your questions as possible, uh, hopefully to offer you some value. Uh, although my um, my trades have not been the best so far this season, but hopefully you guys find it enjoyable. I like what Benny G says here. Yeah, give the stream a like, otherwise you are going to have a fail captain this week. So give the stream a like, and yep, keep the questions coming in. And this one will be pretty short and sharp, 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll probably just wrap it up there. But yeah, we'll try to go through as many of your different style of questions um, as we can. Very quickly on my own team. So at the moment, I have done the three trades just to see how it looks with my squad which has been Cleary to Luke Brooks. I did um, Piakura to Kai Piers Paul. And then I did a boost of Tua Piki out for Dom Young currently. Could be Hammer, but um, kind of thinking negative break even. I know the Pen Penrith matchup is tough. Like really good stat here in the chat actually, uh, which was that since round one, 2022, only 1.3% of players have actually uh, scored over 100 against the Panthers. And that's over... 160 matchups. Uh, sounds like the Supercoach Whisperer has pulled that stat together. That's a great stat. So, look, you're not expecting a big score from Dom Young this week, but he does have a negative break even. I guess one issue with that is that this will be the third round in his rolling average. So if he has a low score this week, it's probably going to hamper a lot of the cash growth that you could be expecting. But then he does have the Bulldogs the week after. And again, you're, you're probably just getting a piece of this really good-looking Roosters attack. So, couple of reasons why I've got him and I've already gone and I've already got Bostock as well so if like look if I had the money I'd probably get a Garrick above him I'd probably get a Val Holmes very frustratingly I was four and a half thousand dollars short of doing uh Piakura to Fainu Samuel Fainu uh Cleary to Luke Brooks and Tuapiki to Val I was like four thousand six hundred dollars short I was like oh if I could have made that work I think I would have done that but this is what I've done uh, at the moment. But um, yeah, we'll get into your questions now. Uh, shout out to William Boss, $2. Thank you so much for that very kind super chat donation. Dom Young or Karaz or Rapana. So immediately, I'm not that enthralled by Rapana. I know he did score like 90 plus last week, but I think I definitely prefer the other two. Karaz for sure has got that better work rate. Uh, Dom Young's probably playing in a better attacking team. Um, you know, he scored. Se I guess he's got 70, 53, and then a 93. So he's had a good start to the season with an average of 72. But I'm looking at the last couple of seasons, 55, 50 average. That's more what I expect him to be getting. Um, the draw is kind of, it's fine. But at 604k, I think I'd prefer Hammer. Uh, definitely prefer Dom Young or Karaz above them. If I was ranking Dom Young or Karaz, I think it would probably still be Dom Young. The issue with Karaz is that while he's got a better base stats, um, by far than Dom Young. Uh, draw wise, not the best. So he really profited last week when, you know, he had a really good matchup, was able to score a try and, you know, got uh, 115 points. In the next few weeks, like, look, Rabbitohs this week could obviously be point scoring, good Friday matchup. Then it is the Roosters, the Storm, and then the Knights, and then a bye. Um, outside of that, after that, you got the Tigers and then Panthers. So it's a little bit up and down of a draw for me. It's probably not the best. Uh, at least Dom Young, you, you know, he hasn't got a bye coming up. You know, with uh, with Karaz, he does have one coming up soon. Um, Dom Young doesn't have one until round 14, so you've got a very clear run for him. Penrith this week is obviously tough. Bulldogs, Knights, Melbourne. So I guess the next few weeks is actually kind of similar. You do get Dragons, Broncos after that too. So actually, to be honest, draw-wise, they're kind of a bit the same. But that's when I say take the guy in the better attacking team. Um, so I probably slightly prefer Dom Young. And he does have a negative break even um, as well. Thank you, Nathan Pup1991, for the $3 super chat. Really, really appreciate that as well. Uh, all right, sorry, I missed a bunch of questions while I was uh, I was looking at a different screen. Um, uh, Megalodon, Amanda Zumiso, no, you're one and only true love of Supercoach. Uh, yes, she does know that. Uh, she's second to Supercoach. No, I'm joking. She's she's number one by far. Let the record show that I said that she is number one. Uh, Matthew Sherwood, um, Trying to trade out ten. Oh, you've got a split question. Sorry, Matt. I have missed your first one, so it's going to be a bit more difficult to answer. Um, is it worth boosting to trade Piakura to Dom Young from Tyler? Yeah, I think that's worth a boost. Uh, Piakura is going to be out for what looks like four weeks, so I think yeah, he's probably a pretty easy sell. And I think if you can get a guy with a negative break even um, in Dom Young, I think that's perfectly fine use of a boost. Um, CJ Papakoni, Hines to Galvin, Luki to Val, Levi to Appy. 
it's tempting because I think you're getting one gun sacrifice in Heinz. You know what? I actually think that's a good boost. I know Heinz out this week isn't very popular because of Cleary being injured, but you are getting a guy with a massive negative break even in Galvin, who I think is probably one of the best buys this week. Luke is injured. You're getting an absolute gun in Val Holmes with a really good draw all the way to Origin. And you're going Danny Levi to Coruscant, who I think is also close to probably maybe the second best hooker. He could even be the best hooker for Supercoach this season. So I think with the one sacrifice of a gun, I think you're getting three really good trade-ins. So I actually think that's a pretty good boost, um, CJ. Everyone talking about the boost. Personally, I prefer a Snickers from Colin Robinson. Um, I'm all about the uh, Kit Kat Chunky, personally. Um, Austin says, Pierre to Val Holmes, Cleary to Brooks, Jacob Gagai to Galvin. That's a solid, solid boost. Yeah, I like that a lot, Austin. Um, hi, Mar, would you prioritize Levi to Appy or upgrading Tua Piki to a gun center? So, yeah, just on Tua Piki. So there was some actually some news that had came out of the Warriors literally about 15, 20 minutes ago. I think I retweeted it. But um, it looks as though CNK is going to be lining up in round five against the Rabbitohs, which is one of the reasons why I have looked to sell to a picky this week. It also frees up a trade that I will probably want to do next week, which I think I'm going to be wanting to get Blaze to Lungy in next week. He could be a sacrifice for either Jacob Gagai, maybe a Burbo. That's already one trade I want to do. Plus, I might want to save a trade next week. I might want to deal with Spencer Lenu finally next week as well. And so I'm looking at these couple of factors as I think I'm going to, I'm, I think I'm going to boost to a picky out of my team. In terms of which one I would prioritize... Depends if, if you're undecided on the gun. It depends also what value you can get to a gun center. Um, like Appy is looking really good. Uh, Levi still does have a low break even, but like that is a massive upgrade. To a picky, you could sit for a week and then maybe move him down to like a, uh, a Talangi next week. So out of the two, which one I would prioritize? I think I'd, st- you know what, all, saying all that, I think I'd still prioritize the gun center just because you know there's so many in form with really big ceilings. I think I'd prefer just to get um, one of them. Um, does Cleary drop in value while he's injured? No, he does not ape index. He will just stay at the same price. Um, yeah, I guess with Hines, you are losing cash, but you are also still retaining a guy who has got a he's got a matchup this week compared to Cleary. Uh, and the other thing with Hines as well is that surely he's due for a big bounce back soon. We'll hope for, we'll hope for it. But um, yeah, I think happy to just keep Hines for the time being with Cleary um, just being injured. Um, Ian Johnson, $3. Thank you so much for the super chat, guys. I really appreciate all these donations. They're very, very generous and very kind of you all. Um, Levi to Appy, Nathan to Brooks, so Cleary to Brooks, uh, Lukey to KPP slash The Hammer. I think the first two moves are really, really good. In terms of who I'd be getting out of Kai, Pierce, Paul, or Hammer, this week I'd definitely prefer Hammer so. Like, I think Pierce Paul is a great trade-in. I've got him in this week myself. I think I'll be sticking to that move. It does have a low break even, but it is a tough matchup away to the Warriors. Hammer so has got a great matchup this week. I think Kai, Pierce, Paul is still not also, like, at a really high price. Like, he's 390k. If he goes up, say, 40k this week, 50k, he's going to be like 440, 450k. It still feels like a very manageable amount of money. You know, you could sell someone like a Sean Lane who's been underperforming recently. You could still maybe move on like a Tua Piki via duels, maybe a Morgan Smithies, you know, think of my own team. feels easier to get to him even after a week of price changes compared to Hammer. So I'd probably try to get the guy who's got more likely to get the biggest score this week, which I think is going to be Hammer. So that's how I'd lean with that, Ian. But otherwise, I think those other two trades are pretty solid. Um, Benny G says, Piakura to Hammer, Cleary to Marshki, Tua Piggy to Garrick. Tell me why that's master coaching trades this week. So Marshki, honestly, I have no idea what his break even is. I'm assuming he's named in the 17. I know, Benny, you were talking about nothing, your second half back spot, just because uh, you didn't really like any of the options. He's coming off the bench. The only, th- I think, Benny, I think you, I've seen you on Twitter mention this, but as long as you've got a very clear plan like to, back to Cleary, look, I can, I, I can get it because screaming out. And you are getting two great guns in Hammer and Garrick. So, yeah, obviously a bit of risk involved, but, you know, I can see the merit in that, given that you're getting two really good um, centers there. Uh, Chris, uh, the mop looking on point. Thoughts on Flano to Galvin, Luki to Kai, Pierce Paul, or Finnafool Uh Is it worth a boost to also do Piakura to Dom Young? Um, oh, okay. Getting some dropped frames. Sorry about that. Hopefully you guys can still hear me okay, but yeah, there's a bit of a lag um, on my face, which is not ideal. But um, yeah, in terms of that set of moves, uh, Chris, uh, yeah, Flanner to Galvin definitely would be doing that. Uh, in terms of Luki to Kai Pierce Paul or Finnafuyaki, I definitely prefer uh, Kai Pierce Paul. I think he's more likely to be getting the 80 minutes by the look of it um, compared to Finnafuyaki. 
who I think is going to be a little bit more attacking stat reliant, at least with Kai Pispo, we've seen um, a lot more base stats out of him. And after this week, it's a really good run for the Knights as well. So I think the attacking stats could there could be there for Kai Pispo. In terms of is it a worth a boost to do Piakura to Dom Young, I think it's a pretty reasonable uh, boost to do this week. Uh, Piakura is out for four weeks. Dom Young has got a negative break even. It is a tough matchup this week, but look, it's the Roosters. They can, I'm tipping the Roosters um, tomorrow, uh, which I'll be going to that game actually. So it's another reason why I'm also kind of wanting to go Dom Young. I can watch him in person tomorrow. Um, was trading out Harry Grant for Reese Robson a good trade? Uh, I, I don't love that move, Brad, just because I know he's on the bye this week and Robson has looked good. But I think if those two hookers I want, it would be Harry Grant and Appy Coruscant. Reese Robson probably in third. He's been actually quite good for owners who started with him. But I think for Grant, the, if I was trading him out, it would only be for Coruscant because I think I look at him at the moment as a better option than Robson. Um, and maybe you can go Lusick back to Grant very soon. So I think the Grant out move, personally, I'm not doing it. I'm keeping Grant this week. I've got Joey Lusick just to play against the Tigers. I'm not going down to Coruscant just because I know from selling Cleary, selling Grant as well, that's two guys who I'm almost definitely going to want back very soon. That's a lot of trades to be using. So I'm not a massive fan of that particular move. Um, if you trade to a Piki, you'll have 708k in the banks to Farnos. Um, yeah, so your options are probably like, you know, Dom Young, Lomax, Karaz, Hamaso. Yeah, I, I think selling to a Piki for like a, you know, again, Dom Young probably is a fairly solid option. But I will say that don't temp- just temper your expectations with uh, Dom Young this week. I'd be ta- I'd happily take a 55, 50 kind of score from him uh, tomorrow. Fast forward five weeks and Amon will still have Lenny when he's back from suspension. Yeah, look, that's the way it's probably going. But, um, you know, this is something I was considering. I was like, you know, I think if Cleary didn't get injured, I would have probably done Spencer Lenny out for Josh Kerr because he does have a negative break even. But again, no... Um, no James Fisher-Harris. I think Liam Henry can still do a solid job getting 40, 45 points. So just going to roll him out for this week, and I will just have to sacrifice Josh Kerr because bigger fires to fight. You know, Pierre Kura, Tua Piki, and Cleary, I'm trading out three injured guys. And I think there's a very... I don't know what the chances are of Tua Piki coming back if uh, CNK is going to be looking to be making a return next week. Um, Liam, and also because chat on Twitter here. Oh, great to see you. Uh, Good stuff. You just hit 1,000 followers as well. Go give him a follow as well on Twitter, guys. Would you sell Flanagan to get Galvin or let Galvin go? No, I'd definitely sell Flanagan to get Galvin. I think Galvin is a great option this week and big negative break even. And he's a genuine player. I'm going to play him this week. Like, he's got good base stats. I think he's very safe for like a mid 40s to 50 score. Um, G'day, mate. Uh, from Jared. If you're after cash, who would you be the top two trades in besides Galvin? Thinking Hammer and Finu, assuming Dom Young goes low enough to be affordable next week. Um, for cash, you could also consider a Bostock. He's got a negative 22 break even, I want to say. Um, he's got the Titans this week, and then he's got the Tigers next week. So, you know, he's one of those players who, if he gets like, if he jags, like, say, three tries in the next two weeks, he could be in for a lot of cash. Even if it's only two tries, he still would make, I'd say, hopefully 100k. So, do consider um, Jack Bostock as well. But yeah, Hamaso probably more likely to go big compared to Bostock, but he doesn't have that negative break even. He's got a very low break even. But yeah, maybe Bostock is something that you could also consider. I'm actually just going to... I do have my slides still open from yesterday as well, just to go through. Um, yeah, so probably looking at the negative break evens, yeah, find new negative 32. Otherwise, yeah, you've got Bostock with a minus 24 um, break even. So yeah, I think if you're excluding Dom Young from your calculations, I think the top two, besides Galvin... They're probably going to be somewhere the Finu and then uh, Bostock, but Hamaso is close to that. Um, let's see, Mr. Callio. Uh, actually, I'll take this question quickly from Jonty first. Is it better to hold Lolo one week to bring in Kai Pierce Paul? Um, I think just sell Lolo. To be honest, like, is like again this week you could it could be a good week for him because it's a tougher matchup against the um, the Broncos. But, like, you've got to sell him soon. He's got he's 392k. He's got a 63 break even. There's no chance, like, very, very low chance that he's not going to make, uh, very low chance he will make that. So, I think just sell Lolo. If you can get him for Kaipis Force straight away this week, just do it. I, I wouldn't even wait, to be honest. Uh, just get him out of your team, I think. Uh, where's the question I had skipped over? Mr. Callio, any ideas on how long Tommy Talao is out? Went early and I'm paying the price. Um, I'll have to just defer me checking that one, Mr. Callow, because I'll need to refer to NRL Physio's Casualty Ward, because I think one of the best accounts to become a patron, by the way, is NRL Physio. If you if you want to know your injury stuff for Supercoach, it's top tier. Um, 
you're welcome, Physio, for the shout out. Um, let me quickly scroll to Manly Sea Eagles. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's going to be that far away. Expect a return. Could even be next week or the week after. So I think, don't worry, Mr. Callow, I think you'll be fine. Um, Josh Strange, this guy seems like an amazing expert. I bet he's ranked well. Oh, uh, Josh, I know who you are. The SC Whisperer, great start, by the way, on um, Penrith Panthers. I didn't need to see that as someone who's looking to trade in Dom Young this week. Yeah, going great guns. What do you mean? 52,500. Don't you know it's a dollar? You you earn a, you win a dollar for every rank you are. So I'm, I'm easily within a shot of the 50K. I'm already 52K. I'm actually ahead of schedule. And I got green arrows this week. I don't know what you're talking about. I clearly know what I'm do- what I'm talking about here. Uh, what do you reckon of mine, Gazaraki? Bostock, Finifuaki for the last trade-in. Uh, I prefer Bostock. Uh, I think similar price, but he has got the negative break-even. It's a really good run for the Dolphins coming up. I think he's more likely, in my opinion, to be more rocks and diamonds, but I think more likely to make more cash because I think he's just got that extra ability to get attack stats to make more cash than, say, Finifuaki. Because Finifuaki is also very attack attacking stat reliant as well. Just remember that. Uh, do I like Ben Hunt as an option for Cleary? Can then trade back to Cleary more easily. Um, I did speak about him a little bit in the halfback section yesterday uh, of the stream. Like, I'm just not a massive fan just because it's the Dragons. I know he's scored well two of the first three weeks, but I guess the Titans was the first week. We've seen how abysmal they've been. Cowboys, fair enough. Uh, you know, he, But it was a home game. He actually should have scored more on that. Manly and then Newcastle don't look the easiest on paper. And then you've got West Tigers, which is fine um, before he probably needs to get traded back to Cleary. He just doesn't have a negative enough, like a low enough break even. Like he's got a break even of 77. So there's no guarantee that he's actually even going to make money to be a bridge back up to Cleary. It's just the Dragons. I think the only option attacking wise from the Dragons I'd be considering uh, is Lomax. So me personally, not a massive fan of getting in Ben Hunt. Um, Ponga versus Drinkwater trade-in. That's a tough one. If I had to just trade in one of the two, and it had to be this week. Hmm. Drink. Oh, you know what? They've both. You know what? They've both got really good draws coming up. Which means I think I would lean Ponga. Uh, he's also a little bit cheaper. So again, if you're trading in someone this week, you know they're both. I mean, Drinkwater's not got too high of a break even. Ponga does. But Ponga is actually Ponga is about one k more expensive, so they're pretty much the exact same price. Uh, but yeah, I think in terms of a run of games similar, probably I'd give the edge to Ponga. Plus his goal kicking, so I think I'd probably just go back to Ponga if I'm being honest. Um, that fat guy, I need your seal of approval. I'm boosting, love that. Cleary, Purekura, and Tuapiki to Holmes, Brooks, and Kaipis Paul. <sighs> that is a lovely boost. Uh, seal of approval, yeah, you've got my seal of approval. That's it. I'm very jealous of that boost, actually. You must have a lot of money in the bank. Um, Moz, thoughts on holding Cleary? Essie Whisper has tempted me. It's the halfback people want. Holmes is screaming my name, though. Yeah, I, look, I think there is definitely validity in just holding Cleary because, as we, as we kind of discussed yesterday, there's not a lot of halfbacks screaming out as, you know, must buys. They're probably more in the centers. And I guess, you know, the argument could be that you just hold both Hines and Cleary this week. And you just sell Heinz next week. And so you're not having that issue of the AE if you were to hold both. The only issue I think that's made, still making me want to go and sell Cleary um, is that Heinz, yes, he's he's already lost a lot of money. And I think we've, we've lost such a big amount of cash on him. Um, if you wait another week and then you sell him next week, like he's got 134 break even. And then you're kind of like, well, he could go down to like the set, like, low 800s you've lost 170k if you sell at that point you are basically locking in that loss of cash um whereas if you just kind of sell cleary now you're selling clear at a higher price granted you do have to probably buy him back at that same price but you can still make money elsewhere in your team with Heinz, if you sell him next week during his buyer week you're going to be losing a lot of cash he runs into the rabbitos after the buy i think it's a good matchup for points cowboys as well at home i think cowboys are susceptible to leaking points then you've got the Raiders again away. That's tough. Then you've got the Dragons at home. Um, and then, so that's a really, it's a nice little run, I think, after the buy, which is making me think, if I'm already taking these losses of Hines in price, I think I'm just going to stick it out. Round 10 to 12 is tough. Melbourne, Roosters, and Penrith, that's probably the three worst teams you could play. But that's right in the lead up to Origin. Um, so I think if you sell, you there's probably an argument that you don't get him back until Origin period. 
where I think you probably are going to want him because he's really the only gun halfback I think available at that time. So I think that's probably what you just need to weigh up if you do decide to hold Cleary and maybe sell Hines instead next week. But I think in your situation, if you can get like a Val, like I'd be so tempted just to get Val because I think you're just locking in a guy who you can just keep literally for the rest of the season. Um, how are we going for time? Only 21 minutes. We can go another 15, 20 minutes. No problems. Place a Tilly or Burbo. Uh, probably Burbo, Mr. Calio. Again, I just would look at matchup there. I think Burbo is more likely to play more minutes than him anyway. Um, and he's got a better matchup against the Dragon, so I'd probably just play with him, uh, play him instead. Um, hey, man, for, from Sai Panuganti. Hello to you. Hey, man, what do you think about Cleary, Bo Fermor, and Levi? For Young, so I'm assuming Dom Young, Coruscant, Kai, Pierce, Paul, and haven't used a boost yet, and you sell Pierre Cura next week. Yeah, I think that's fine. Like, look, Bo Fermor, he's, he's, he, he's fine. Like, he got 53 last week with no attacking stats, really. So very solid. Uh, but you are getting, you know, I think Kai, uh, Kai Paul could get very similar for cheaper. Appy's a gun. And I think, yeah, Dom Young obviously has got that big negative break even. And then if you can deal with Pierre Cura, like I think in your position, like if you've got someone like a Burbo in your center wing, perfectly fine to hold Pierre Cura until next week. Because what you can do is just Pierre Cura to someone like a Blaze Talungi via Burbo and you free up like 200k. So I think that's fine. If you want to park Pierre Cura for the week and do those other moves, I, I'm, I'm for that. Like I don't mind that. Will Curran get dual position? Um, based on the clamor that's happening on social media, I think he will probably end up getting it, um, which I'm happy with. Josh is buying Sivo. Mike is Sivo. Oh, what a move. I've actually owned Sivo in the past for some big scores, so he has got a special place in my heart. I do get him for that, was it 2021? I don't, you know what, actually, I think it was in 2020, which is like one of the earlier years when I actually played Supercoach. Um... He, I'm having a look at it now. Mike Acevo, what was his game? Yes, this is the game against the Cowboys, round eight, 145 points, and he scored four tries. Yours truly actually owned him. I was actually better at Supercoach when I wasn't making content. Um, should I be getting Teddy or Val Holmes? Ooh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Teddy or Val Holmes? Teddy or Val Holmes? I'm just going to say Val, only because you've got a lot of other good fullback options. Granted, you do have a lot of other good center wing options. Teddy's got a negative break even, but it's Penrith. You know what? I think Val. I think I'll just take Val, and you can still make do with like a Ponga Turbo combination of fullback. Um, so yeah, I'll probably just go Val, just only because of that. The replacements that you can get at fullback are probably better than... I think Val is like number one center. Teddy, question mark, if he's a number one fullback, that could be Ponga, could be... Turbo, could be drink water potentially. You've got some other options. Um, all right. Choose one. Garrick, Young, Hammer. Uh, if you had to choose one, I'd go Garrick. I think Garrick's probably a better long-term option than both of those guys. Um, and it's a good matchup this week as well. So yeah, probably Garrick personally. Um, play four out of the five this week. Karen, Kai, Pierce, Paul, Smithies, Firm, or Burbo. Um, definitely Pierce, Paul. Definitely Karen. Um, probably Bo, Firm, or it's the Dolphins, at least, at the end of the day. Like, there is some potential for attacking stats. Then it's either one of Smithies or Burbo. See, I'm actually benching both of them currently, the way that my team's set up. Um, if I had to play one of Burbo or Smithies, I think I would just take Burbo, just for the just for the matchup, potentially get some attacking stats. Uh, William, again, $2. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Aman, Dylan Lucas to Dom Young. Penasini to Karaz. Thoughts? Um... Dylan Lucas to Dom Young, I think it's fine. Lucas hasn't been named. Penasini's solid. Like, he's not really a must trade. That does feel a bit more of a, like a luxury trade. But I get it. Like, Penasini is probably in a tier below someone like a Karaz. He's kind of that guy who's probably going to average over the season mid 50s. Um, it's a good matchup against the Tigers, though, this week. Uh, that feels like a bit of a luxury move. Like, I don't think you need to force it. Uh, for Karaz as well, like, I think I'd only upgrade Penasini if I was getting to someone like a um, like a, a Val or a Garrick. Otherwise, I think I'd probably just end up holding um, Penasini. Um, Gabe and Ben Vadini, $2. Thank you so much for that donation. Um, is Kieran Foran a good buy? That is the first time I've heard someone man mention Kieran Foran as a buy this entire season, potentially even last season um, as well. Uh, no. 
Uh, Kieran Foran is not a good buy. Uh, he's 471k. He's got a break even, I think, of like 80. Um, he scored 14 points against the Bulldogs last week and f- playing the full 80 minutes. Like, he's just not... He's just never really been relevant for Supercoach. He's like a mid-40s averaging player. So, no, I'd, I wouldn't recommend Foran um, as a buy. Um, Ape Index, Knights draw is excellent and KP has the goal kicking. Yeah, this is probably why, I'd, again, that person who asked Drinkwater or, or Ponga... I'd probably still lean Ponga, and I very easily think even on my trades next week, I could, I'd hopefully not boost again next week, but you know, next week, depending how the trail goes, um, I could just sell the trail straight to someone like Ponga, Pappy. Um, actually, Brian says no love for Pappenhausen as a top fullback. Uh, I just forgot to mention him because I, he's on the buy, so I just wasn't thinking about him this week. But yeah, Pappy could be a top fullback as well. There's a very good chance I just sell um, the trail to a fullback next week. And then maybe one of Burbo or like Gagai to Talangi. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that's the only two trades I need to do next week. Uh, which means Liam Henry would be, again, my second row forward, uh, my second front row forward next week. But yeah. Do I think Jaden Hunt gets three weeks? Who is he filling in for? Um, let me just have a look at the... Jaden... Has he even been named? Are we thinking about the right person? He hasn't even been named. I'm going to skip over that question because it doesn't seem like he's even been named. <laughs> Apology, apologies, Ricky. A little bit lost on that one. Uh, thoughts on Jamin Jolliffe starting front row forward. Could he get extra minutes with Tino out for the season? Uh, super pod and could fix out front row forward. Yeah, look, Jolliffe has always been a very meat and potatoes guy. But generally, I think when he gets minutes, he still maintains his scoring. Like last week, I'm looking at it 47 minutes for 51 points. Going to have a quick look back to last year just to see if there's any games that stick out when he played more minutes. So, yeah, he had a game last season where he played actually quite good. 60 minutes he played last season for a score of 79. 69 points in base. Now, that is ridiculous. So, 60 minutes for 79, 69 in base. 52 minutes for 59, 47 base. 54 minutes for 64 points, 58 base. He's a machine. He just doesn't stop tackling by the look of it. I'm just going to quickly go back to 2022, but I like the shout, Ian. You know, looking at it, this, you know, he seems like a guy who just, if he gets some minutes, he just keeps up the work rate. Um, yeah, so in 2022, he only had two games where he played over 50 minutes at the very end of the season, but it was 53 minutes for 51 points, 53 in base, 50, point, uh, 50 minutes, and then 53 in base again. I like the shout. Honestly, I can't I can't knock these numbers. They're really, really solid. Yeah, so I think, look, if anyone is looking for a front row forward midi, um, you know, you've got Flegler, but Jolliffe could actually be a good pod. He's about 480. He's 484k. Um, he's got a slightly highish break even of 80 because he only played 21 minutes in round one for 16 points. So maybe you can wait a week, see if the minutes do actually come to fruition. But yeah, I can't I can't knock that move, to be honest, just based on those numbers. Um, all right, how are we going for time? We're on 29 minutes, so I think we'll go for another kind of 10 or so minutes, and then we'll probably wrap it up. Um, Aman, drop the uh, skincare routine, please, from Megalodon. Um, I don't really have a skincare routine. After a shower, I just put some moisturizing cream on my face, and that's about it. I can't even... I, I don't even remember what it's called. Um, I could run off to the bathroom and find it if you want, but um, no, otherwise it's pretty pretty straightforward. Moisturizing cream and... That's it. I don't do anything else for my skin. Um, I probably should, though. Get Val or Boost and get Young and Hammer instead. Ooh. I think, Matt, I think I'll just get Val, to be honest. I think he, I rate him really highly. He's just number one center that you can get this week. Oh, he's a starting front row for the Broncos. Sorry, I'm looking at Jaden Hunt for the Dragons. I don't know why. Okay, sorry. Oh, no, that's... Oh, did he play there last year? Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm on NRL Supercoach stats, and they haven't the jersey hadn't updated, so he still was wearing his Dragons jersey, and I was wondering what the hell's going on here. Okay, fine, he's moved to the Broncos. Clearly tells you how much I know. Of course, he's been named as one of the starting second forwards for the Broncos. Um, will he get the three weeks? Yeah, look, he probably is going to fill in the time when Pierre Cruz is out, but you know, in terms of making any money, don't really see it because Pierre Cruz is going to come back, and he's only going to get one price rise in him, so probably probably not worth considering and. Yeah, he's probably just one I think I'd just be uh, monitoring. Yeah, thanks guys for clarifying. Yeah, that was a bit of a 
bit of a dumb mo moment from me, which I get. I have plenty of them. Uh, the real Keefe, thank you so much for joining as a member. Very much appreciated. Um, Cleary to Brooks, Jacob Gagai to Blaise Talangi, and Reese Walsh to Tom Turbo. Good trades. So interestingly enough, Reese Walsh could be back actually in round six. Uh, but I still think Turbo is a better fullback than him in any case. So yeah, I'd probably make that move. Um, Talangi, I think you can wait a week. So I don't think you need to boost for that in that particular uh, trade scenario. I think you can just do Cleary to Brooks, Reese Walsh to Turbo, and you don't need to do Gagai to Blaise Talangi. You can just wait a week. It's always the thing where these guys who are only playing their second game, who look like good TV prospects, always just like the general advice is just to wait a week because you never know. He could get injured this week and then is not a trade-in at all. Uh, or he could potentially drop out of the team. Maybe they go with a different direction if, you know, the the, the uh, Parramatta Eels don't do so well. So I think I'd advise just not holding off on that particular gag eye to, to Lungy move, but the other two, no issues with. Uh, Quentin, looking at moving Pierre Crew to Pierce Paul from the Knights, would you do it? Uh, Quentin, shout out to you, who uh, does a great FPL podcast if anyone plays Fantasy Premier League. Uh, I have done that exact move. So I've got Kai Pierce Paul in for Pierre Crew. So if I go reverse... Trade, you can see this is kind of what I've done. So I did Pia Kai to Kaipius Paul, Cleary to Brooks, and I've done Tuapiki to Dom Young at the moment. So I think it's a good move, Quentin. <laughs> um, Steez says, Aman, is Terrell May a must? If I have Cotter and Flegler, I could trade Cotter if he's in doubt. Hmm, tough one, because you, you've got two decent front of forwards already. Uh, I still think I would go Terrell May. Name to start this week. He didn't, like, I know the score last week was a little bit lower, but it was kind of such a big, big scoring game for the Roosters. It wasn't really one for middle forwards. So I think, yeah, I'd probably still, I'd probably even go Cotter down to him, especially if Cotter's going to be in some doubt and minutes could be restricted. I think I'd probably be happy to do Cotter um, to, uh, to to Rome, I should say. Uh, thoughts on Josh Kerfetino and or bring in Joloff next week if his minutes stay up. Yeah, I think with this one, James... Based on what I just read out with Jolliff, I know he's a bit more expensive than Josh Kerr, but he could actually be just be a very solid mid-range front row forward who can easily get 55 plus by the look of it. So I think personally, if you can at least cover Tino, I'd maybe be tempted to wait a week, or I'd even be tempted to just go straight to Jolliff. Um, but if you feel like you need to make the move this week, then at least with you know what, actually, if, I think if you had to make the, make the move this week, I'd actually probably just go straight to Jolliff because those numbers look really, really good. Um, so I think I'd be pretty happy just to go him um, on the basis that he gets these extra minutes because it was a bit hard to read in last week's game, but he did play 47 minutes. I'd expect that to, to creep up just a tad. Um, who are we death riding this week? Uh, if I had to say anyone I'm death riding, probably Hamaso. Really good matchup. Probably Garrick as well versus the Dragons. They're probably the two that stand out. Yeah, probably those two. Um, Ian Johnson, $8. Thank you so much for that donation. Um, Ian, you are one of the best. Um, always in every stream. Always very uh, contributing a lot. Very much appreciate it. Round 5 trades. Round 5? Do you mean round 4? I'm going to guess you mean round 4. Um, Toy Piki to Burbo. Uh, Blaze. Pierre to Kai Pierce Paul. Hughes to Jolliff. Okay, maybe there's like, maybe there's like your round 5 trades. Um Yes, I think that's pretty solid, getting to Lungi for money. Pierre Kuro to Kuiper's Paul, even next week is fine. It's probably only going to cost you like 15k. And then, yeah, getting Joloff. Yeah, don't mind those moves next week. But thank you so much, Ian, for the very kind donation. Uh, and guys, if you are liking the stream as well, please do give it a thumbs up. Let's uh, go through some more questions. Um, Lomax or Dom Young, Aman? Oof. Oh, we were kind of discussing this yesterday, weren't we? It was a bit of a tough one. Just again, it really depends. Do you favor the Dragons or Roosters? I think Lomax could potentially be a top five or six center wing this season, even if the Dragons are average. Uh, I think Dom Young could also be the same. I do like that Lomax is goal kicking. See, this is the thing I'm just thinking like, if I think Lomax is better, then do I just trade him in this week? Um, what did Dom Young average 63 last season? Lomax has been averaging 83. I think I'd still take Dom Young. Uh, just take the better team. But that's a very close one. At least with Young, he's got this big negative break even that you can at least make some money um, with him um, and could potentially turn out to be a keeper. In terms of draw, they're not that different. 
so I'd probably just take the chance on um because like manly manly knights west tigers is it's actually not that bad um I guess Penrith this week is very very tough for Dom Young but it does he does have then bulldogs after I think I'd just slightly still lean um Dom Young Brooks is a flash in the pan in my opinion. Yeah, potentially. I've liked what I've seen a lot out of Luke Brooks. Um, I think he's been close to getting more points than the um, 64 average that he's currently got. So I'm happy to just go him for the next few weeks. Can I scroll down? I think I, I literally just scrolled down um, without even thinking. So there you go. Uh, is, it crazy, is it crazy trading Dylan Brown or Dearden for Galvin to free up money to bring in both Holmes and Garrick? Nah, I don't think that's crazy, to be honest, Ricky. Uh, personally, I would sacrifice... Look, of course, I'm... I'm a very, I'm very loyal uh, to Dylan Brown, and for supercoach purposes, like I've always liked him as a supercoach option. I think out of those, like I think I'd, I know the draw is re- really, really good for Dearden. Uh, but I think if you could sell Tom Dearden to Galvin and get both Holmes and Garrick, um, I would be doing that personally. I think I'd be doing that because I think the points differential between Galvin and Dearden might be like say ten, but you're getting probably the two best center wingers. So. Yeah, I think that's not that crazy. I think it's one one gun sacrifice for a good money maker for two guns. I think that's a really good option. Yeah, Dragons do have a decent draw. I reckon people are sleeping on Garrick. I think so too. A lot of the hype this week is for Dom Young. Like I'll tell you now, if I could afford Garrick instead of Dom Young, I'd be probably getting him. Even if instead of Kaipis Paul I went somewhere Lafinu, I've only got like seven hundred and eight K, so I'm still short of Garrick. So I think I would get Garrick instead of Dom Young personally. Um Tino to Dom Young, Piakura to Kaipis Paul, Levi to Appy. Yeah, that's very, very, very good boost there. Um, uh, have you ever thought of doing a stream with an extra person? Could bounce off each other. I have. I'm just very bad with the tech of like actually streaming with more than one person. It probably is, I, I imagine is quite easy. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, I always find with streams, I know my streams can go for very long, but I feel like when I've, if I've ever done like a guest podcast and you've got another person, I don't know, I talk a lot. So I'm happy to talk myself for the whole time. But I also find that it can go a little bit too long sometimes if you have more than one person because you kind of want to have both people say their say. And so that could just mean it lengthens the, the length of some of the podcasts and stuff. And I'm already rambly and long enough as it is. I feel like if I added that, another person it probably becomes way too long. So yeah, probably that's that's one of the main reasons why I just like to stick to myself and also I can control the schedule myself like it completely is up to me like today I had a free evening so I was just like sweet we'll do a stream um, when do I think Zach Hosking is a trade uh, when his break even gets probably 90 100 plus I reckon would you prefer Garrick or Holmes uh, definitely Holmes for sure uh, Q&A is always better when it's just you giving your thoughts uh, thank you Benny yeah I appreciate that and look by just having one person it also means I can just go through more questions like I think I've probably I can't count how many questions I've gone through but it must be at least like 25 or something in the what 39 minutes um Hamaso or Young this is probably one of the biggest questions of the week um I'd probably go with Dom I, Dom Young is who I'm thinking yeah I'm probably thinking Dom Young just negative break even and um look I'm gonna be biased I'm going to the game tomorrow I want to see him uh, in person scoring a try and me losing my mind so another reason why I'll go him not the best reason though um, okay hey man would you run Turbo, Garrick and Brooks together I think it's fine I know this week is really good the draw does toughen up a little bit for Manly that's probably the only thing to be conscious of is that after this week they do run into Penrith it is at home uh, and then you've got Warriors away but then it is the Titans Parramatta so I think like I think Turbo and Garrick are both borderline season keepers um compared to someone like a brooks who might not be but i think two out of your three being season keepers is um is pretty fine uh would i go homes instead of young if you could absolutely i definitely would even though he's 815k like i can see him getting to like 900k with this run coming up do i think center wing guns are better or second or forward guns thank you ricky so much for that 299 donation very much appreciate it um center wing guns i think at least what we're currently seeing like the second or forward guns on a really good day, say like an Isaiah Yo, he scored 94, all acquired to like 108. When the center wing guys have a really good day, Karaz 115 with one try, Dom Young 150, 
Val Holmes, 144. They're, they've obviously got the lower scores in them, but they've just got this humongous, like, 110, 15-plus potential, whereas with a back row, it takes a lot, really, to get that. You Like, Bryce Cartwright was one who did it in round one, but he scored a double to get that, and that's not going to happen very often for a second rower. So I think the center wing guns at the moment are looking much better than the second row forward guns. Um, Liam says, I'll do a specific episode for NRL Supercoach Chat just to have you as my guest. Let's hook it up. Appreciate that, Liam. Yeah, just reach out to me and we'll see if we can link something up for sure. I'm always happy to, you know, join in uh, and guest on other people's podcasts and things like that. I'm just terrible with tech myself. So for my own stuff, I just generally run it myself. Um, not sure if you mentioned it before, but what would I do with Cotter? See what happens. See if you get any news. But like someone before was saying he had Cotter and Flegler and I and he said, would I still go Terrell May? And I said, yeah, I'll probably sell Cotter for Terrell May. Thinking, I'm losing my shine on Cotter just a little bit because it always seems like he looks really good and the draw is really good for him coming up. But that also makes me think, you know, we've seen it with Tamalolo. If the Cowboys are going to put up a massive score, then I think he's not going to be relied on to play such big minutes. But even last week, he played 68 minutes versus the Dragons, but they scored a bunch of points. He only based 45 and scored 47 points. The week prior, when the game was much closer, he based 65, playing 65 minutes. Looking at these games coming out, Broncos, yes, he might play decent. Uh, he might score decent points. Titans, you can see that being a cricket score. Parramatta, Sharks, Penrith, um, Dolphins, Titans. Again, I mean, I guess Penrith is a bit tougher in there, but I see a lot of games where maybe he's not going to be relied on so much in the middle. So I don't mind selling Cotter this week, but look, if he gets named to play, I think... Ideally, you'd probably just um, you'd just keep him. Um, let's round out with two more questions, and we'll get up to the forty-five minute mark. And I think we will be wrapping it up there. Um, hey, man, love your streams. Is it okay if I use my second boost? Um, thank you for saying that. Very nice words. Uh, no problem using a second boost. I'm probably going to be using my second boost this week, so I don't personally have any issues with it. Um, what do I think of Josh Kerr? Dolphins good run. Yeah, look, I've been keen on Josh Kerr, like negative break even. He's been base powering pretty good, like kind of in the mid 40s, playing about that same amount in minutes. So I think at that price, you're paying about a low 30s cost for him. So you're probably going to get about 10 points value. So it's probably going to be a slow burn in terms of a cash uh, cash cow, but he should still offer some decent scores. Um, opinions on Xavier Willison keeps his spot even when Haas returns. Yeah, actually, that's another thing, another move I could be doing next week is um, I could be doing like Spencer Lenu out for Xavier Willison potentially. Um, yeah, look, I think of the Broncos for middle forwards, he's probably the most tempting with Haas out. Um, would, would he keep a spot when Haas returns? He has looked good when he played in the Indigenous All-Stars game, I believe it was. And then even last week, he seems like their most attacking front rower. And so I feel like like he like to me he offers more than someone like a Fletcher Baker who's just meat and potatoes. Um, sure, Kevin Kevin Walters might like meat and potatoes, but Xavier Willison does seem to have a bit more of a X factor attacker set about him. So, yeah, I think there's maybe a chance if he plays really well. There's very much a chance he could just end up staying in that Broncos team. Um, sure, someone asked Talangi off Fatape. Uh, I'd probably prefer Talangi um, if you're getting. I mean, I know Fatape is going up in price this week. Um, he has got a low break even, but I don't know. I think I still prefer Talangi. Uh, playing for a better team that you think would score more points. And given that he scored 67 last week, he's more likely to have a bigger negative break even next week. Um, thanks, mate. Really appreciate the help. Currently ranked 8K. Pretty decent. Much better than me. And you've made me happy with my trades. Let's go Turbo. 180 plus with the C. Yeah, Tom Turbo locked in as probably as my captain, I think. Um, but very much appreciate those kind words. Thank you. Um, we've just hit the 45 minute mark, so I think we'll probably wrap up the stream there. Didn't really want to go too much longer than um, 45 minutes. So we'll pr- probably wrap it up there. I'll try to release this as the audio podcast very soon after the stream as well. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Thought it was good just to do a nice little quick Q&A. Uh, do give the stream a like if you did enjoy it. Um, in terms of my own trades, like obviously I'll post my final team tomorrow before lockout just to be very transparent on probably Instagram and on Twitter. So make sure you guys are following me there. But yeah, like I'm probably going to do the trades that I've got you. My team is probably going to look like what it is currently on screen. So if you want to take a screenshot, if you want to take the screenshot and copy a team ranked 52K, here you go. If you don't, then no need. 
But uh, thanks everyone for tuning in uh, on this uh, back-to-back stream. Uh, really appreciate it. Give the stream a like on the way out and uh, see you all in the next one. And good luck for the rest of the weekend. Enjoy the long weekend. Cheers.